Welcome to Time for Hope, a faith-based mental health program. Join our host, certified clinical mental health counselor and Christian psychotherapist, Dr. Frida Cruz, and her guests as they discuss real-life issues and offer expert clinical advice and solid biblical application for any and all life situations. Now here's the host of Time for Hope, Dr. Frida Cruz. Once again, we would like to welcome you to another edition of Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host, and for the second and concluding week, I would like to welcome as my guest, author, speaker, and founder and president of Main Thing Ministries, Jeff Kinley. Jeff has written a book titled, As It Was in the Days of Noah, that we began discussing last week and we'll wrap up today. In his book, Jeff takes what could be identified as a children's story of Noah and the ark found in picture books and heard in Sunday school classes and brings out the striking parallels between Noah's day and Jesus' prophecy of the end times, indicating the time of his return. You will certainly want to stay with us as Jeff and I interact about Noah's days and the similarities with our current times. And Jeff, I want to tell you again how much I appreciate you inviting yourself to come over while you were in Anderson, South yes. Carolina, and you tell me you grew up there and I that's did. where you're from? Absolutely, my whole extended family's still there, and so any chance I get to come back to the upstate area, I like to do that. Where do you live now? In Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, uh, that's a nice city to it live, is. It is. Great place live, to live in I also. Um, one of the things that I like that you brought out um, and even made me more conscious of and I hadn't thought about it just exactly that way, is that those that choose to sin mm -hmm. and take the way things are going lightly or what other people do or don't do lightly are going against the very conscience of mm -hmm. right and wrong that God has instilled in us from day one when we come yeah. into the world. We know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. There's something there if we go to take something that doesn't belong to us and belongs to somebody else that says, that's not right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not right to do. And we, ought, we have to admit that. And you actually said that God has embedded a knowledge of himself within us, uh, which is known as general revelation yes. and uh, so forth. So I really appreciate your putting that in your book. Another thing I appreciate is that you didn't set dates. Right. Right. <laughs> that you kept bringing out, we cannot know the day nor the hour. No one knows that but the Father himself That's right. That's right. as to when Christ will return. But you didn't let us forget it could happen That's right. uh, any time. Mm -hmm. uh, or the, uh, yes, uh, that it, it could happen any time. Mm -hmm. So we need to be on our guard with that knowledge mm -hmm. that we don't know the day nor the hour. But I do believe children mm -hmm. of God, uh, if they're close to the Lord, walking close to the Lord and seeking Him and so forth, can know uh, the times that we're talking about Absolutely. and the similarities that we're talking about uh, uh, in, in your book, In the Days of Noah. I have no doubt in my mind that might be a hundred years because mm -hmm. you know God says right. that uh, time is not the same as we right. measure time. Right. So it, it could be uh, that it will be a while yet. Mm -hmm but it certainly is headed in that direction, and we right. cannot doubt that, can we? Not at all, and, and of course, it's very important that we not set dates. I mean, uh, there have been people who have tried to do that, but as someone has, has said, a broken clock is right twice a day, you know? <laughs> but people are, are, who try to set dates, I think, step beyond the boundaries of Scripture. 
When we look though in the sky and we see clouds gathering, we can at least say there could be a chance of rain. Uh, that's what Christ did in Scripture. He said, guys, these are going to be the cloud gatherings that you're going to see on planet Earth before the big judgment comes. And that's what we outline in the days of Noah. And we, we talked about that godlessness that's throughout the land. And you talk about the conscience issue in Romans 1. God says that His divine power and attributes are clearly seen by what He has made. Then He says, therefore, they are without excuse. So every human being, according to Romans 1, has the knowledge that there is something out there greater than themselves. Now, we don't know his name yet. We don't know what he's done for us, but we do know that he's power, powerful, creative, and divine. And then Romans 2, Dr. Frieda also says that the law of God, the standard of God, that basic right and wrong that you spoke of, is embedded within our hearts. He says, even written on our hearts. So even the worst criminal, even a person who doesn't have uh, any morals about them still knows deep down within them that there is a right and wrong. And of course we can suppress that, which is what Romans says we do. We suppress the truth and all unrighteousness and we deny it or try to. And that's what leads to all these other things, the immorality and things we spoke of earlier. Yes. Um, in thinking of uh, the the things that are going to happen. You mentioned the Antichrist mm -hmm. stepping forward, mm -hmm. and you mentioned the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, but preceding this particular Antichrist mm -hmm. are going to be many Antichrists. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Think, uh, you know, talking that their religion is right. uh, the, the the real religion, mm -hmm. or that their leader was God when he was not, yes. and all kinds of things are mm -hmm. happening right now, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. uh, and will be going on more and more, right. and uh, it it could confuse people. Mm -hmm. Uh, as to mm -hmm. who is this true God. I right. refer to him as mm -hmm. the creator God. Mm -hmm. That way it differentiates yes. him mm -hmm. from all other gods, yes. uh, you know, that he was able to claim. Yes. Uh, and then he says yes. without anything, yes. I am the Lord Right. I am God, mm -hmm. and he just like nails it yes. and nails it down and doesn't give anybody else a chance right. to take that title. That's right. Well, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 24 that in, that in the last days that many false Christs will arise. And of course, 1 John tells us that the spirit of Antichrist is already at work within the world. So if you think about it, Satan does not know God's timetable. Satan does not, does not know when Christ is going to come back or when the end times are going to come. So he, in essence, has to have an antichrist sort of figure ready for every generation should that God put that timetable into motion. Mm -hmm. And so Satan is already, he's doing his work, but he doesn't know when God's going to make this whole thing happen. I like you bringing that out. Some believe Satan is omniscient, knowing mm -hmm. all things as God is, which right. of course is far from no. the truth. He does not know mm -hmm. everything about everything mm -hmm. and all things. Mm -hmm. And because if he did, he would notice he would know to leave me alone because he tries so hard over <laughs> right. and over and over yeah. again and God winning uh, right. and not allowing him, uh, you know, uh, to do what he wants to do yes. uh, to me in my ministry and mm -hmm. that kind Absolutely. of thing. So yeah. I think about it uh, mm -hmm. uh, that way. He keeps coming back and yeah. trying yeah. though. Right. Um, but some of the signs that you talk about in your book, mm -hmm. uh, in the, uh, you want to go over some of them? Mm -hmm. like I have them. Sign one. Mm -hmm. um, false Christ. Mm -hmm. We just talked about right, that, didn't right. we? We just covered that. Exactly. Uh, wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. My goodness, <laughs> when has there ever been a time right. when war was everywhere you turn? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, wars and rumors of wars. Yes. And then uh, famines and earthquakes. Mm -hmm. And you've got some figures that are just outstanding. Mm -hmm. It's estimated that some 1,300,000 earthquakes occur each year That's in right. the world. That's right. Well, we've got one. Mm -hmm. We're sitting on a fault here mm -hmm. in South Carolina that mm -hmm. happened a little over 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would come all the way to Spartanburg, where wow. we are, if wow. it hits again. Yeah. And it was a devastating earthquake, mm -hmm. uh, even in uh, 
South Carolina. Mm. Uh, how about the persecution mm. of believers? Mm -hmm. You want to talk about yeah. that? Well, we're seeing this obviously begin to ramp up in our own country. I mean, just one generation ago, would we have thought that simply by standing for traditional marriage that you would be labeled a hater, a bigot, a racist or even. Put in so, jail. Or put in jail, exactly. Uh, just standing for basic morality. And so, yes, more and more Christians are going to have their beliefs persecuted. But, but if you'll remember in John 15, Jesus said, do not be surprised. If they hated me, they will hate you. Oh, if yeah. they persecuted me, they will persecute you. And one of the reasons Jesus said was because he revealed sin simply by his stand on morality and his stand for righteousness that exposes sin because light always exposes darkness. And so I believe that Christians are going to be persecuted more and more as we ramp up to Revelation. Of course, right now, Dr. Frieda, all over the world, Christians are being persecuted. Christians are being burned alive. They're being crucified. Beheaded. They're being beheaded uh, by radical uh, Muslim extremists. So all over the world, Christians are being persecuted. So we've sort of been given this age of grace in America. We've been protected, but I believe that protection is slowly being eroded. Being lifted from us. They're yes. telling me it's time for a break and we'll be right back. Faith does not bear witness to any of our five senses. You can't feel it, see it, touch it, smell it, nor hear it. Faith requires believing in something or someone to the extent that you will confidently trust the thing or person to take care of or look after your best interests. An example is depositing money in a bank. A spiritual example is trusting God to take care of us. And this is often where the shoe pinches, especially when it comes to God. After all, do you know anyone who has seen or touched Him? The true God is invisible and cannot be seen or touched. Admittedly, it would be much easier to believe in Him if He appeared in person when we called for Him, but this would necessitate Him giving up His attribute of omnipresence, the ability to be everywhere at once. Faith requires believing that God exists in spite of the fact that he can't be seen and touched. Hebrews 11:6 in the Holy Bible relates, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I believe the key to be the earnest seeking I well remember the time in my life when I desperately wanted a relationship with God. I remember being on my knees and crying out to Him to help me believe. In other words, I needed Him to enable me to place my trust and confidence in Him. I did not question which God I needed to believe in. I firmly believed that the God of the Holy Bible was the true God. The time came when the Holy Spirit was pleased to reveal Jesus Christ to me, and I was able to trust Him with my eternal destiny. If you want to be ready for Christ's return, and He will, you must make sure you have a saving relationship with Him. And to have a relationship with the true God, you must believe His Word concerning His Son. The invisible and untouchable God took it upon Himself to become one like us that could be seen and touched. He sent himself in the person of his son, who was human like us, and yet remained God. And since he was God in the flesh, Jesus Christ boldly asserted that the invisible God was his Father. And he further asserted, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me.
Thanks for staying with Jeff and I as we continue and conclude our discussion related to his book titled, In the Days of Noah, or As It Was in the Days of Noah. And uh, Jeff, this is it. Whatever you, you're going to have, you're going to share, th this will be your opportunity to do that. Now, we talked about the famines, the earthquakes, the uh, and the persecution of believers. What about the apostasy and betrayal that we're uh, experiencing today? Many people falling away from the faith, uh, and and many are being betrayed. Uh, I have a great burden for people that attend church every Sunday, maybe are deacons, maybe are Sunday school class teachers, uh, take part in the church, whatever, that, uh, you know, they believe they're doing the right mm -hmm. thing, but they have never truly searched their souls mm -hmm. to see if they are true mm -hmm. children of God. They can't give you an account of mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. and how uh, they came to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and came to know Him as their Lord and Savior. Are you with me on mm -hmm. that? Yes, in fact, so is Jesus. <laughs> At the end of the first century, you know, Christ wrote the book of Revelation to the church and mm -hmm. to the churches of, of Revelation. And of those seven churches, five of those churches Christ gave blistering rebukes to. And one of the reasons, Dr. Frieda, was because they had religion, but they didn't have the new birth. Uh, many of those people in those churches were committed to activity and to religious activities, but they didn't know Christ personally. So Jesus called those churches back to that original passion for Him, a fervent faith in Him, a passionate love for Him. And that's one of the things I think is missing in some churches today. We're all about activity, performance, putting on programs and productions, but are we really worshiping and getting to know the true God that we claim to know and worship? And are our pastors making mm -hmm. sure that they preach uh, and apply the yes. scriptures to the everyday mm -hmm. lives yes. of their hearers, mm -hmm. and many are not doing. Right. Uh, many are not doing that. Right. Then, when we think mm -hmm. of apostasy, mm -hmm. we also have to think of people that uh, that remain in sin, mm -hmm. are unwilling to give it up. Mm -hmm. And at some point, God says, I'm through with you. Yeah. I've had enough of mm -hmm. you. Uh, you know, I've tried to get you to repent. You won't repent. Right. Uh, and some just uh, have can also say they've had enough of God. They don't believe right. this about Him. They don't believe that about Him. Mm -hmm. They would even say they didn't believe He could kill that many people in the mm -hmm. flood right. and things like that. So we have all kinds of apostasy mm -hmm. uh, going on. But mm -hmm. I, grew, growing up, mm -hmm. can look back and can say I've never seen such uh, apostasy and mm -hmm. falling away right. uh, as I'm seeing today. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's so strange with some mm -hmm. of the days in which I grew up in. Absolutely. I mean, we see it not only in churches today, Dr. Frieda, but also in whole denominations who are compromising themselves morally and doctrinally. And that's one of the reasons why uh, Paul talked about people who, who, deny the God, who deny God by their lifestyle. Uh, he told Timothy, he said, Timothy, pay close attention to your teaching. Absorb yourself in pure doctrine. And the reason that's so important is because believing the right things about God leads to right behavior for God. And so we're beginning to see that more and more as we see churches compromising their doctrine, accepting the, the cultural values values instead of scriptural values. And that's what apostasy is all about. It's about falling away from the faith. Falling away. And then number six, the gospel preached to the entire world. Wouldn't you say that has happened well, and is happening? It's, it is happening. It hasn't completely happened yet. There's over 2.4 billion people who have never heard the name of Christ. And so that's why it's very important for believers to send, for churches to send missionaries out into the world to reach unreached tribes and unreached peoples. And now people are even sending missionaries to America. You know, I've spent probably uh, 15 trips over to England uh, taking youth over there to help evangelize. Very interesting, I was standing on the ruins of the very first church ever built in the whole uh, country of England here not long ago, built in 300 A.D. 
But to go to England today, you see empty cathedrals, you see empty churches, churches that have been repurposed for other reasons. And now experts in England are calling themselves not post-Christian, but pre-Christian again. And I think we're in the post-Christian age in America right now. And so yeah, America has plenty that. of people to evangelize, don't get me wrong, but we also need to send missionaries all over the world. Yes, uh, I do know that my show is encompassing mm -hmm. the world, mm -hmm. but it would have to do with the equipment, sure. that whether they had the equipment or yes. whether it goes to the right place in the world right. and that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. But we do have a wide coverage mm -hmm. of this program Amen. now, and I'm very thankful yes. to the Lord for such a, a ministry opinion. as that. And then the abomination of desolation having to do with the second half of the tribulation, mm -hmm. a time when judgment is so intensified on earth that he calls it a great tribulation. Mm -hmm. I do know that mm -hmm. for the first three and a half years of the mm -hmm. tribulation, we might not know we're in it, mm -hmm. that it might be this last half mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that wakes us up and yeah. makes us know if if you're one of that believes you're going through right, it, right. Uh, or if you've been uh, lifted and right. taken home uh, by Christ, you can know what's right. still going on yeah, sure. on earth and so forth. So Absolutely. that's going to be a, a, a it's going to be a very trying yes, time. Absolutely. Um, so let's let's move on since we're getting close to the end uh, with this. Um, having to do with the um, un, um, let's see, undefined or underlined, uh, oh, I've got, I've got that on page 72, having to do with that sin again that you mm -hmm. mentioned early on and the immorality that exists yes. in our world today, which is one of the most outstanding mm -hmm. The most outstanding signs, I think, mm -hmm. that we're nearing uh, mm -hmm. the time of Noah's uh, time mm -hmm. and uh, so forth, and that uh, sexuality—that was God's idea, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. He meant it to be enjoyed by a male and yes. a female um, right. uh, uh, in marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, sexuality between a male and female is natural. Mm -hmm. Homosexuality is not natural, though a mind and spirit scarred by sin may sincerely believe yes. that it is true. And those are the ones mm -hmm. that our hearts should go out to. Yes. Uh, that they could wake up and realize that the, the sex they enjoy should be, uh, they should look at their bodies right. uh, to yeah. see, uh, you know, what is indicated there. But of course, nature does go astray sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I grew up with a boy that nature had gone wrong mm -hmm. on and he had to be changed right. from one to the other mm -hmm. and became a very outstanding mm -hmm. professor and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And I was proud of him, right. uh, you know. Uh, these individuals end up embracing a lifestyle contrary mm -hmm. to the design and order of nature itself. Exactly. That's where I think yes. uh, the problem comes in. But you do say that a global storm gathering and Christians are neglecting to tell their friends that that's mm -hmm. what we ought to be about, mm -hmm. isn't it? The church yes. and we as, right. uh, as individuals, uh, as the de desensitization grows, mm -hmm. we have 43 million abortions worldwide in 2008. Mm -hmm. We have cultural violence, mm -hmm. uh, and these, all of this was going on in, right. uh, uh, in Noah's day. Mm -hmm. Male gender unique, female gender, mm -hmm. we should, the, the uniqueness should be taken right. into consideration. Then there's Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. It was destroyed mm -hmm. over yes. the homosexuality. And then pornography, we've mm -hmm. mentioned that. Right. And we haven't even touched the hem of that mm -hmm. garment, right. have we? Right. And uh, so forth. But what I would like to close out with is this uh, thought. While it is impossible, irresponsible, and foolish to make predictions, mm -hmm. and I love you saying this <laughs> in your book, regarding the exact timing of the last days, we do appear to be seeing storm clouds gathering on yes. the horizon. Yes. A planet that is intoxicated with its own sexual pursuits mm -hmm. and perversions is a sure sign we're closer now than ever before. And we mentioned the falling away, the Antichrist, and um, 
then uh, I would like to end with this thought. We are to live our lives normally, mm -hmm. uh, knowing and believing that he can return, as we've already mentioned, any time, uh, any hour. Mm -hmm. But, and this is what you might would like to mm -hmm. say, the door remains open as, yeah. as Noah's Ark did to the end for those that would be converted and turn to God as their Lord and Savior. The door remains open to enter God's kingdom for all who will receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior while we anticipate and expect his soon return. You mm -hmm. have a final remark yes. to make about that? Absolutely. Well, Dr. Frieda, when it's darkest, that's when the light shines the brightest. And I believe we are headed towards more dark times. But the exciting thing is, is that the early church experienced the same thing. They were living in dark times as well, being persecuted by godless emperors. And so I think at this time, it's time for believers, individual believers to realize that they can be like Noah. They can walk with God and be blameless in their time just as he was and point others to God's deliverance. And of course, we know that the ark today is Jesus Christ, his cross. And so that's what I'd like to point people towards is the ark of salvation, who is Jesus. If Christ were sending us out today as he did the disciples, that's the message he would give us, Amen. isn't it? Amen. If he were here yes. on earth. Thank you so much again uh, for joining us here on uh, Time uh, for Hope, Jeff, with your book, and I pray the Lord's continued blessings upon it and upon you. your ministry. Thank you very and much. Um, this book that you're uh, writing, that He will do the same with mm -hmm. it. But I do have some things to share. Don't go away yet. I have some things to share from our viewers. Dear Dr. Frieda, my husband has been having an affair for the last two years. He has also started drinking again. We lost our home because of his unfaithfulness. Please pray that he will come back to the Lord and that our marriage will be restored. And then I have uh, another note. I really love the Time for Hope program and thank you for that. Your guests and topics are great and the products you offer are wonderful. Those are greatly encouraging notes. Just keep them coming. And if you haven't helped us financially with this program, I encourage you to ask God what he would have you do about helping us carry on this ministry financially. And then I would encourage you to join us again next week on Time for Hope. A free fact sheet that contains additional information about today's topic is available upon request from our ministry. You can also receive a copy of today's resource for a donation of at least $14 to the Time for Hope ministry. You may call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. When you call or write, prayerfully consider a donation to our ministry. Our ministry's mission is to offer hope to discouraged and hurting people. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support this ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you do this, you are joining us in offering hope to many viewers seeking help and hope for their situation. This will also enable us to inform and inspire some viewers to expand our mission as they learn and in turn can minister more effectively to hurting people around them. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is time for hope.